everybody, I'm Mike Avila with Sci-Fi Wire coming at you from WonderCon 2017. And we're here with Delilah Dawson, the author of Lady Castle from Boom Studios. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. So let's talk about Lady Castle. Um, it's a fantasy series which has a, I guess for lack of a better term, a Disney-esque type feel to it, but not quite. Trademark, no. Yes, <laughs> trademark. So tell us about it and, and the concept behind it and, and what do you envision with it moving forward? Sure. Um, Lady Castle is basically a gender-flipped Arthurian legend uh, in which the king and all of his knights ride away on crusade and get eaten by a dragon, uh, leaving the... <laughs> that's, that's not Disney. That's not, <laughs> not canon. Um, so the women find themselves in the castle, the coffers are empty, and uh, the wizard who had the dragon eat the king also cursed the castle. So they know that curses are going to come, animals are going to come after them, and it turns out that the blacksmith's wife um, is the woman who picks up the sword because she thinks it's very finely made, um, instead of the last man who has showed up scorched mm -hmm. from dragon marks and hopes he'll be made king. And so the women together, uh, so the king frees the princess in the tower, um, who isn't really a princess who requires rescuing outside of the fact that she can't pick a lock from the inside. <laughs> and then the younger sister also has to learn how to be a princess. So what's interesting about this is that you, you're putting a, a really nice spin and twist on a lot of the standards that you see in fairy tales and those types of stories. Yeah. I really like to flip tropes. Yeah, and the, as you put it, the princess does not need saving. So obviously, as a female creator, that must be, that must have been something you wanted to tackle to put the female characters in a different light that you may see in some other books. It was, and the whole thing came uh, from watching Monty Python and the Holy Grail. There's that line that says, you know, strange women, line in ponds, distribute in swords, is no basis for a system of government. And I like, but what, what if it was, though? Uh, so that's where the whole thing came from. Um, but along with the tripping the, the tropes as far as who has power and uh, the women help each other. So there's, we were really sure in the um, art that it's, it's not all um, attractive skinny white ladies. There are women of all ages, of all races, of all sizes. Um, there's a woman in a, uh, in a wheelchair at one point. Um, one of the characters is in a hijab, but they all have something to contribute. It's not just based on uh, the original power plays that would have been in a real castle, but how people can, can do their part, whether it's raising food mm -hmm. or, you know, the well hag has answers as well. It's an all-ages book, which is uh, great, but also as a writer must be somewhat of a challenge to, to put together the story and make sure that it's accessible for readers of all different ages and maturity levels. It's a great kind of right? challenge, though, yeah. Um, I, you have to deal with some more um, adult themes like grief. You know, the, the king and his men were killed, and, and that was their family. Lots of these people were really upset, especially the youngest sister, the 11-year-old uh, Gwyneth, is having trouble getting over the loss of her father. Um, but at the same time, I have an eight-year-old son and a ten-year-old daughter, and I really wanted them to be able to read something I've written because most of what I write is very violent. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, I, I took things like, you know, when there are werewolves in issue two, um, and, you know, we all know that werewolves crave virgin flesh. Uh, so I of turned that into maidenly flesh so that, you know, when my son came to me, I was like, what's a virgin? I didn't have to explain that. It's an awkward conversation for a parent to have. Smart move. But as, as, as a mom, that, that must also influence your writing and, and impact it in, in different ways. That you, do you even notice it sometimes where you see like your, your, your parental instincts coming into the story? I do, but I think it's different than some past generations um, where you know, I, I never want to do, um, say, slut shaming in my books. I want a healthy outlook of sexuality. Mm -hmm. um, I want you know, acceptance of all different kinds of people. Um, and you know that's how I raise my kids too. Like I, I want them to be very accepting and, and modern. So especially in a more medieval world, there's lots of um, things that weren't talked about then, um, maybe in feelings that I've had to work around. And I also had a lot of fun like using uh, medieval curse words that don't sound like curse words today. So like the word sard means the f bombs, and they're like, oh, the sarding werewolves. Like that's historical very, accuracy, historically accurate cursing that my kids <laughs> can't understand. So you're doing something else for for Boom as well. What can you tell us about your next project for Boom? I've just, uh, just started this, but um, I have been very fortunate to get to write a short for Adventure Time and uh, maybe some issues down the road. Um, I'm a really big fan of Adventure Time, and again, that's one that my kids and I all love together. We read all the comics. We know the entire uh, pantheon of, of DVDs by heart, so I'm super mathematical excited for that. As a writer, that must be a, a fun series to, to tackle because it's such a wide and, and diverse playground to, oh, yeah. to jump into. Oh, there are so many characters. and Almost anything is possible in that world, which is one of the funnest parts. That there's no point where you're like, oh, that's, that's not realistic. And you're like, yeah, who cares? That's a talking lemon. <laughs> and when's that, when's that first issue come out again? I don't know. Oh, um, you do not know yet. I don't know. So, you know, we will ask your PR out. person.